<laughs> hey guys, welcome to our video. We're so excited to have What's going on, Swad Nation? It's me again, Big Chungus Hater eighty eight. I'm back here with I'm back with another Blender two. I'm bl I'm back with another Blender tutorial here. I almost accidentally said I was black with another Blender tutorial, which isn't true. I am black, but it's not with another Blender tutorial. It's just in general. I am back with another Blender tutorial today. I'm going to be teaching you all how to simulate my uncle Jeremy on February eighth of the in the year t uh, 2014. Now, a lot of uh, Blender people, they become professionals, they get into the industry, but very few of them actually know how to simulate my uncle on February 8th, 2014. So I'm going to be teaching you a very valuable skill here today. First thing we need if we want to simulate my uncle is the staircase. So I'm going to take this default cube, I'm actually not going to delete it. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to change its scale though. Uh, stairs are usually thinner. Uh, on these two axes, I'd say, um, maybe a little longer. Give him some more space to uh, to move down these stairs. He's not going to be walking. I'll tell you that about my uncle on February eighth, twenty fourteen. Here's what we have to do. We're going to use the array modifier to make this staircase. Um, its offset is not going to be on X, but it's going to be on Y. We want it to move back, uh, actually a little less than one, so zero point nine, and up uh, about. Uh, two point f uh, or, or just two, I think. I'd say that looks like a pretty good staircase, wouldn't you? All right, now we move this up to like that's too high. Let's move it up to like I believe there were like fifteen stairs on the staircase that day. So here are here are the stairs, uh, and then the other thing we need to do is we need to give these stairs some walls, because obviously, or or at least some guardrails, you know, because you know stairs have guardrails to prevent you from falling off the stairs. Uh, so I'm just going to create some walls here, um, rotate these on the Y axis to make them, uh, 90 degrees to make them, you know, uh, perpendicular to the, uh, to the ground. And I'm going to move them, uh, how this is 2.5 meters X Y. So I'm going to move this, uh, 1.25 on the X axis so that it is right on the side there. Um, in fact, I'm just going to move it a little bit more. There's a little space in between, but not too much. Uh, now, I'm just going to make this the right size. And shape for these walls. I think that's more than far enough. And then also make it tall enough. Now, that's, that's, those are some pretty good walls for this staircase. Let's put another one on this side. Uh, oops. And let's just move it to negative, shoot, a negative 1.3 so that it's on that side of the stairs. So here's our staircase. The other thing we need is the, is the, the floor at the bottom of the stairs. So I'm going to add another mesh that's going to be the floor. And it's just going to be another plane, right? And I'm going to move this out here and just scale it up. So this is the floor. Um, uh, supposedly, like in real life, we'd have more walls here, uh, you know, around the room at the bottom of the stairs, but that's not really important for the simulation. Uh, this is about all we need in terms of the environment. So one more uh, crucial step in the setup process. I'm actually going to move this up just a little bit. So a little space you see between the bottom stair and the floor. Uh, the last thing we need to do is make sure that these are all uh, rigid, passive rigid bodies. Because otherwise, you know, uh, Uncle Jeremy won't be able to interact with them. So if you select them and go into the physics tab, it's really easy. Just hit rigid body, switch this to passive, and that's all we have to do um, for each of these. And for the floor as well. Now, uh... What else are we going to need? Uh, we're going to need to make this look good, right? Right now we're in solid. I'm going to go into rendered, rendering with Eevee right now. So it should be pretty quick. I'm going to move the sun as well, or this this light. Uh, I want it to be at the top of the stairs looking down, because that's where the stairs are in my house, or at least that's where the light in the stairs were in my house on that, on that day, uh, February 8th, uh, 2014, you know? So, um... 
that's about how it would have looked. That makes sense to me. Uh, and I'm actually going to extend these walls out so that, you know, more like the actual walls that day. Um, so just go into edit mode and extrude the walls a little bit. So here is our staircase and let me actually move this a bit higher just to like, uh, you know, Randy height. Um, and the other, there's one more thing actually I forgot to mention is we need the top of the stairs. We don't have that right now. So if you give me a second here, let me just add another plane. Um, here we go. I want to move it back here and all the way up to the top of the stairs. So you see we have the top of the stairs like right here. Move it down a little bit and scale it up on the y-axis. Uh, move it up a little bit again, just make sure it's right in place. And then scale it up on the x-axis a little bit, just so that it's, you know, uh, in the right place. Um, and make this also a passive rigid body. So that's the top of the stairs. Um, and I'm going to extend the walls, both of them, just enough for the uh, end of the walls to go past the top of the stairs. Oops. There we go. And there's our scene set. We do need some materials, however, to make this really look like uh, my house when Uncle Randy was in it on that day. Uh, well, Uncle Randy was there. Uncle Jeremy was there too. We're not going to put Uncle Randy in the set because uh, he was found innocent. They could not prove that he was the one who pushed Uncle Jeremy, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was him. We don't, we don't really talk to him anymore, you know. We're all a little suspicious. Uh, yeah, he had, he had his qualms with Uncle Jeremy. So, here we go. Uh, first things first, these stairs need to be made out of wood, right? So here's our material. What color is wood? Wood is like a, a brownish color, right? It's like right there, you know? That, I'd say that's a pretty good wood color. Oh, that's wood color. Uh, and what's this hex value? Let me grab this hex value real quick because we also want the floor to be the same uh, color. So, oop, there we go. And this floor as well at the bottom. And in fact, the only thing that's going to be a different color is going to be these walls. Oh geez, let me uh, let me point this light. Uh, give me a second here. I'd like this light to be directional, but I guess we're not going to get away with that. So, I guess we can drop it for now. Yeah. Um, and these walls are also going to need to be a slightly different color. Uh, you see the walls in my house were a little bit off-white. They were closer to that, right? Um, so let's make the walls the same color as well. Uh, boom, boom. There we go. So and now we have our scene set for, uh, for Uncle, Uncle Jeremy's adventure. So the next thing we need is Uncle Jeremy. Now I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna actually build him here on on the floor where there's more open space. But just so you know, when we're when we're we're gonna we'll we'll move him after he's built. So he's a little thinner than that, and he uh well here's the thing is uh after the first few steps he he used ragdoll physics because his his uh, his all his bones were broken and he uh you know lost consciousness. Which is what happens when you're when you're uh, uh, when your brother uh, Randy pushes you down the stairs. Although again, he was he was found innocent, so we really don't know anything. So we we need to uh, make him uh, be able to be a, a ragdoll, uh, and there's a pretty cool way to do that. First thing we need to do is give him all of these body parts, right? So he, that's his body right there, and I'm gonna name this so that we know what it is, right? This is a uh, body. Next thing we need is a sphere. Uh, this will be his head. I want to make sure this is a, a fine location. I'm going to say negative five. 
and three. And that's how we're gonna set this guy up. So negative five. And this is gonna have to be at like five actually. We're gonna shrink it down to the size of approximately Uncle Jeremy's head. Um, now he needs some arms and legs. So to do that, I'm gonna make one cylinder and I'm going to actually shrink this down to about the size of his arm. And um, I'm gonna put it where his arm would be. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna shape it a little bit because you know no no one's arms are actually just big cylinders. Uh, you know they they taper a little bit. So this looks more like an arm to me. Uh, and I'm just gonna duplicate this for his other arm and for his legs. So uh, here we go. Here we have Uncle Jeremy's. Uh, body with arms and legs and I'm just gonna move the whole thing up a little bit so that we can see it uh, better alright so here's how we're gonna actually make him ragdoll we're not actually gonna use an armature that only makes it more complicated uh, we're going to make all of these rigid bodies and use rigid body constraints so here we go uh, rigid body this can be active they're all active, so it's as simple as pressing rigid body and then uh, moving on. Right? So it's that simple. Now, these are all rigid bodies, and the next part is uh, when we actually make them uh, move as limbs would. And the way we're going to be doing that is using rigid body constraints and that's actually a, a really cool way to make something to make a body move like a body would without using an armature granted it's moving like a it would move like a dead body might uh would, that all makes sense in the context because you know the, the stairs uncle randy that whole ordeal you know february 8th 2014 so here's how we're going to do that we're going to add an empty. I like plain axes. It doesn't really matter as long as you can see it. So I'm going to move this up right to where his neck would be. And what I'm going to do is hit rigid body constraint here. And it's going to be a point, right? Uh, we'll enable collisions and it's going to be between his body and his head. So. Basically what this is saying is that both the rigid body of his head and his body will rotate around this point and they'll stay connected at that point. Basically, this point is his neck. All right, we're actually gonna need to do this a few more times. So you could follow along here. We need one for his arms. So put one like right at the shoulder, right? Rigid body constraint point uh, collisions enabled between his body and this here arm and then another one for his other arm and these are the same steps so I'm just gonna speed up uh, the rest of this process for you so you don't have to you know you don't have to watch the whole the whole thing because you probably get the idea from this exactly how to do each rigid body constraint it's essentially just the same thing over and over again okay now there's one more really important part if we don't if we just ran this as is his body would be suspended there in the air because these points would not want to move. The points themselves are not rigid bodies. They can't be. But what we, these empties. But what we can do is parent each empty to the body, to the torso. And then they'll all move with the torso. And every other limb will just be dangling off as the limbs of a dead uncle would be. So, select all of them uh, and hit Control P and just set parent to object. Now they should all be parented to his body. 
uh, one more thing we have to do is it's important that uh, we give him a texture. You see the rest of the room, it looks fantastic. It looks just like the, those basement stairs did on that day. Uh, but he doesn't really look like my uncle, so we're going to make him look a little more like my uncle. First thing we do is add a new material for the body. I, he was wearing he was wearing a blue shirt. Um, it was like sort of like this color. Um, it was a really nice colored shirt. I like that shirt a lot. And it was it was a t-shirt. So what we're gonna have to do here is actually uh, make uh, sleeves here. So it shouldn't be hard. Just cut cut in the right in the middle uh, on here, and then on this one as well cut right in the middle and then here's all we have to do is uh, select everything and then unselect this bottom part uh, and you can do that however however you want I'm pressing C to select a whole bunch of things at once and pressing shift to set it to deselection instead of selection it never fails me um, I like this method and I believe right now we have edges selected I'm gonna select faces I'm gonna add a new material and call this one sleeve assign now I'm gonna add a new material and call this one uh, arm and I'm going to invert my selection, control I, and assign arm to the arm part. So now we can change these individually. Uh, sleeve is going to be that same blue color from before. Um, it was around here. Yeah. And arm is going to be my uncle's skin color. Uh, it was, it was like here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty close. Um, now we have to do the same thing for this arm. Uh, here we go. So, select everything. Uh, unselect this. I'm gonna move around here so I can get to the back. And we're really just gonna be using the same materials here. So, gonna add a material slot and select sleeve that's already selected so I'm going to invert my selection add a new material slot and select arm and assign that there so there we go um, and just to make sure all the colors are consistent I'm going to take material 5 I'm actually going to replace this with sleeve because that's the same color as the sleeves and there you go it's a slightly different blue and he was wearing khakis uh, and Let's change his pants to reflect that. Uh, let's make a new material pant. Uh, and they were they were kind of beige, so it was like it was like right around in here. Um. Yeah, yeah, they're they're kind of kind of like that. Kind of like that. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. So that's pant, and uh, this shoot. Oh, I'm getting rid of that. Uh, his other pant was obviously the same pant like. Now the hard part here is getting his head right because uh, we're actually going to have to draw his face on uh, because I, I don't actually have a picture of his face that I can put on this sphere so we're going to have to draw my uncle's face. Luckily we all know what he looked like, we all remember from the good times we had with him before the stairs. So I'm going to unwrap this sphere. Uh, here's where it gets a little tricky if you've never done something like this before. Uh, we're gonna need a new texture. All right, guys, real sorry about that. So Blender crashed, but uh, I went ahead and I remade our whole scene here uh, with my uncle Jeremy, and now we can uh, move on and finish where we were going. So again, we were starting with his head, right? So we needed to give him a head, and we needed to give him a face. So our base color needs to be an image texture because we're actually gonna draw his face on. Here we go. And we're going to create a new image for that. Uh, we'll just call it head. And uh, it's a little big. We can just go 500 by 500, right? Uh, we don't need an alpha channel. He's not transparent. And our RGB is going to be uh, about the same as skin 
I, I, it's, that's kind of close, I think. That's pretty close, wouldn't you say? That's a little much, maybe. Let's take a look at, at what this color is. Let's uh, steal that hex value, right? Um, and I'm going to actually make a new head, head two, right? Again, 500 by 500. Uh, no alpha channel. Color is going to be this. Uh, and that's about it. Okay, so give it a second to load up. And here we go, here's his head. Uh, I believe I already unwrapped this in this version, but just in case, I'm gonna unwrap it again. And uh, now we get to draw his face on. So the way we do that is we're gonna go into texture paint mode, right? Uh, it's a little big. Right now, I wanna paint his hair on first. Uh, he, his, he's graying a little bit, but he still, had, he still has some pretty strong hair. So here we go. He's, uh, he's balding at the top, but he never let that get him down. The only thing he let get him down was down the stairs when Uncle Randy pushed him that. Well, again, we just don't have any proof that it was Randy, but, you know, we can all kind of feel it. There was there was tension between them, okay? There was, there was, there was tension. Uh, anyway, Uncle Jeremy, uh, hope he's fine. Well, hope he's fine in heaven, you know, we know he's not alive anymore lots of lots of grief on that fe uh, sad February 8th day so next thing we need is, is eyes um, let's put those on there and eyebrows and then we need a mouth all right I like this mouth uh, let's give him a little tongue in there too why not? We'll have, we'll have fun. We'll have fun. We have fun here. I mean, we had fun when we were together, so. There we go. There's his little tongue. Alright, now this is a pretty accurate uh, representation of Uncle Jeremy. Uh, I know there's not much light down here, but that's fine. There was a dark basement anyway. So, here is Uncle Jeremy, right? This is, uh, this is who he is. Um... I'm gonna have to move him though. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select uh, all of his body parts and these empties are already parented, but I suppose I'll just select everything. And I'm gonna move the I'm gonna move him to the top of the stairs. Is he too oh, he's pretty wide, he's having trouble fitting in the stairwell. Um that's fixable. Uh, first let's move him to the top of the stairs. All right, come on, Uncle Jeremy, you, you can do it. Well, can't do it in real life anymore, you know, after, you know, the, the incident. But you can, you can do it in the simulation, at least, I, I think. It's pretty tall there, huh? All right, let's, uh, let's augment the scene a little bit to make sure he's fine. I'm going to move the walls out. I'm also going to extend their tops up because... As you notice, he's quite tall. Uh, so, there we go. The walls are a little taller now. And this guy right here, this stairwell, uh, I'm going to make it wider. Wide enough for him to fit down. And that should be good. Oh, and the floor here. Also make that, shoot. Also make that wider. Wide enough for him to stand on. And we're going to have to move this light up because... As you can see right now, it's really shining hard on the back of his head. Let me just grab that in here. We're gonna move it up a little bit. And uh, let's move it back a little bit too. Actually, in fact, you can move it back and then move it back down. I like, I like that. Um, okay, so here he is, my favorite uncle about to have something tragic happen to him and the thing is right now if we play this I think well nothing happened that's because he's totally balanced and he's actually gonna fall backwards now that's not realistic in real life that is not what happened so just to make sure that he falls forward I'm gonna select everything again all of his body parts here 
and I'm going to rotate him. Did I get his head? I did not. Let me get his head. I'll rotate him on the x-axis a little bit, so he's already leaning forward, see? Now, let's see what happens if we run the simulation. We should see the simulation of what happened to my Uncle Jeremy on February 8th, 2014. Here he goes. Oh, shoot. Something went very wrong. Yeah, I, I, I'm really not sure what's going on there. That's spooky. All right. Now here's how we combat that kind of problem, is we hit Command Z until it goes away. And it is gone. It went away. All right, cool. Now that problem is gone, taken care of. We don't have to think about it anymore. Um, but another easy way to make sure he falls is a little bit of wind. Uh, you know, in real life, we all think it was Randy back here. But, again, no evidence, so all we can do is assume maybe he was blown off the top of the stairs by the wind. So let's go to a force field here. Let's add wind. Um, I'm going to move this all the way back here. I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to rotate it. Uh... Rotate it on the x-axis so that it's facing Randy. I'll set this to 90 degrees exactly. And I'm going to make it far more powerful. Let's say 50. That should be probably enough to blow him over. Just in case I'll move it closer to him. And let's see what happens here. Huh. So it's enough to hold oh there he goes. Woo! Just like that fateful February February day. Oh, you know what? Forgot. I believe this rigid body here is only going to apply to the original uh, step because this modifier has not been applied. So if I apply it now, it should have actually made these settings. We'll see. Is this a rigid body now? No, it isn't. Now. I gotta be honest, I'm not really sure what's happening here. Uh, I've never really tried to simulate my uncle uh, my uncle on February 8th before. I just thought maybe I'd give it a try. But if I had to guess a few things we can do, our mesh source final, uh, because that'll be after applying all the modifiers. And perhaps, Instead of convex hull, we use the mesh. Is this true? Will that work? Looks like it's working. How far did he go? He didn't fall very far at all, huh? Oh, that's more like it. That is exactly what happened in real life. So, uh, we've got our whole simulation running pretty well. And all we have to do is set up the camera. This is not a very good camera angle. Right now, we can't even see Jeremy. We see his shadow, and then we just see him kind of slide on through. Uh, I'd say we can move... Let's move this a little closer uh, to the mouth. Now, this is an art. It's always hard to capture the scene, especially because no one captured the scene in real life. That's why there's no proof that Aunt, uh, that Randy was there. Um, but, you know, we can all kind of tell. So... Uh, Here's what I'm going to do is something really cool with cameras is you can make them focus on an object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it focus on Randy's head. All right. So I, I believe add object constraint. Um, uh, I believe it is track two. And let's select his head. There we go. Just copy the just go ahead and copy the parameters I have here. Uh, negative Z, up Y, uh, and target Z should be unchecked. Now, we have a great angle where we can watch uh, my Uncle Jeremy fall down the stairs and lie there limp as if all the life has been extinguished from his body. So, that is how you simulate my Uncle Randy on February 8th, 2014. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do one more thing. And you guys don't have to do this, but you might want to. 
uh, we can shade him smoothly so that he looks less like a just a, a goofy looking object and more, more like a person because he was a person and he's gone now because on that day February 8th 2014 he fell down the stairs uh, so that's the simulation I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to render this and I'll, I'll get back to you guys when it's done rendering all right guys so I just finished rendering this animation that is that shows uh, my uncle Jeremy on February 8th so uh, let's watch it and let's see what we got Oh, look out there uncle Jeremy Woo! oh no yeah, I mean, that's that's basically exactly what happened. So, I was having a little bit of trouble rendering it in Blender 2.8, so I ported it over to Blender 2.79. Uh, I just imported everything from the Blender file, and I switched to the Cycles engine. So if you're having trouble, you can do that too. It's, uh, it's really great to see Uncle Jeremy again in his final moments, so it's a really important skill to have to know how to uh, simulate Uncle Jeremy dying uh, down the stairs, yeah. It's a really great skill. Yeah, poor guy. Well, I'm, I'm gonna see about maybe putting some music over this, a few sound effects, and uh, see if I can, you know, upload a, a separate uh, full video of Uncle Jeremy onto the channel. Uh, see, uh, thanks for watching the tutorial. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed. Remember to like and subscribe. Uh, I'll see you later, Swad. And I'll see you later, Swad Plan.